Greek Christmas cookies, Korambiedes. I think I like them because nobody knows how to pronounce them. But they're really simple. Take a few sticks of butter. That's how you start any good cookie, if you ask me. And you just mix it together a little bit with a hand mixer. And you want to kind of do this in a low-key way, on a low speed, because you're not looking to beat the cookie dough to death. Right? Right. And this is a cookie that I routinely watched my mom make when I was growing up, so it's really dear to my heart. And then it has some really, you know, just an egg yolk, actually. A quarter cup of powdered sugar. It's kind of nice to watch a simple recipe like this come together. Yeah, look, I mean, I want to dive in the bowl already. Pinch of salt, of course, because there's a pinch of salt in every good sweet thing. And then just a little bit of vanilla extract. The Christmas and the holidays are a time when you're always eating so many different foods. You're snacking, you're nibbling, there's a buffet situation. But it's kind of nice to have some things that are a little simpler and more dialed down. I'm going to have you add a splash of that brandy because every holiday is not complete without a little splash of brandy. You seem to be really good at that. <laughs> Go ahead. Is this a nice splash? Oh, another splash, come on. Perfect. At this point, when every, almost everything is in, I like to mix it with a spatula just to kind of get a better grip on it, right? Right. And now this is the part where you definitely want to just add and mix enough to just integrate the flour, three cups, which I just sift by putting it through a little strainer. My mom had one of those old-fashioned strainers where you had to turn it and oh one grain of flour would go through every half an hour. <laughs> so in three days we'd have cookies. <laughs> you know, in a, in a world where we try to cut corners and save time and maximize efficiency, mm -hmm. I think sifting is a really important part of creating a great texture. So I like having a simple recipe like this that people can wrap their heads around and then one step that's a little bit of work Right. Because it really creates a fluffy light texture. With all that butter, we want to give the illusion that people are eating something dietetic and delicious. <laughs> so then that flour, just a little bit at a time. I just I put a little in, right, right in the middle. Right. And again, you don't have to do, I love how you avoid the flour. You look right. like you're jumping out of the way of a tidal wave. And cooking <laughs> is messy. You got to really like it. You know, I mean, I really love cooking. So, you know, my fire burns bright no I matter tell, what. But I have to tell you, there are days when everything I do is wrong. I burn everything. <laughs> when I have a day like that, I make a, a cookie like this yeah. that's easy. Yeah, because then it makes me feel like, oh, I actually know how to do stuff. Okay, so that's, this is really the last step to the batter. Okay. It's just integrating nice and easy all that flour. You can see it's kind of coming together. It almost looks a little bit like a pie dough. I'm going to just take, you got to let this rest a little bit because cookie dough needs a break too. So then we just put this into the middle of a piece of parchment and you don't need to really work this a lot it's got a lot of butter in it so even if you take it out of the fridge when it's chilled mm -hmm. it's going to come down to room temperature very quickly because of the high fat content right so you've got to realize you're working with something fragile that needs love and patience so what I do is I just flatten it to about the thickness I think I'm going to need it to be which is about an inch inch and a half give or take wrap it up like a parcel Right? right? Turn it around and press it a little bit into the parchment so that without kneading it a lot, you're molding it into the shape. And you want to pop this in the refrigerator for a little while okay. and let it take a little cookie dough pre-nap. All right, so once the dough's rested a little bit, you can feel it kind of gets firm, but that'll change very quickly. Right. Then you just want to grease a baking sheet. Okay. Well, you can smell a little bit of that brandy and oh, the butter. <laughs> well, someone's got a, someone's a little heavy-handed, but it wasn't me. <laughs> you literally want to break off a little piece, right? Right. And you can right. feel it. And I love bald cookie dough. It's so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just literally, you roll the balls by breaking off pieces. And this is nice because even if this dough gets a little bit too soft, you don't have to work it a lot. Okay. All you're doing is rolling it into a ball. 
God, you make everything look so easy. If I do this at home by myself, it's going to be in a, a, a not as easy as this looks. Actually, in all honesty, um, I find that cooking actually doesn't get easier. It's a very cruel mistress, so to speak. You know, you can you can make something a thousand times and it's delicious, and then one day you make it and you burn it and you have no idea what happened. Once you have this shape, you can what is traditional, really, or more traditional, is to bake them or to form them a little bit like this, maybe with somewhat of a flattened bottom, and just stick one dried clove in the center. That's the traditional um, coram viede that you then bake and dust completely in powdered sugar. Um, the other thing that I like to do with this is just either form with your finger, press down mm -hmm. and form a little well or you can take the back of a teaspoon, flatten it and form the well with the spoon. And maybe that's better because they're more even. Okay. But I kind of like the rustic hand form look. Mm -hmm. I don't like them to look uniform. Your rustic hand form look looks nice. Now my rustic hand form look would look like a fingerprint. <laughs> but for those that don't believe in the power of their rusticity, there are tools. Thank you. Bake these, um, and so we'll just pop these in the oven, 350, until okay. they're brown, probably about 12 to 15 minutes. Once these are baked, you can see, you don't want to go nutty. <laughs> You don't want to go crazy trying to get them super golden brown because okay. there's a lot of butter in them. You just want them to be kind of pale like this. Okay. So I just lightly roll these in powdered sugar. And you know what? If you don't like the powdered sugar, don't roll them in powdered sugar. Oh, okay. You can also take any kind of jam. Here I have, for example, some seeded raspberry jam. Deliberately with the seeds so there's like that little bit of uh, gets stuck in the back of your teeth texture that we all love so much. And I just fill that with raspberry jam. You can also use, I kind of like things that are acidic or tangy. So I really love um, apricot for this. I'm excited, I'm gonna go home and, and attempt this with my family. I don't know if it's gonna look this. Take my, I got a, I got a, a little batch of dough for you. Okay.